Now we are queuing up for Samuel Raju's presentation on um, a protection totogram. Um, we'll start in the beginning of kind of where my art journey began and where my music journey kind of ended. So I came to Austin in 2015 uh, with dreams of becoming a musician and you know doing art things and meeting all the crazy people that I didn't have around me uh, in Wisconsin where I come from. And I got here and uh, you know tried to get into that scene and quickly realized it wasn't going to be as fulfilling as uh, being part of an artistic community, a community of makers, a community of people that can grow old and continue what they like to do. Uh, the music scene just doesn't have that kind of longevity that I believe, unless you're like maybe into jazz or something and you have that, you know, <laughs> places to meet people and create community. I find that the arts is way easier for that. So I started painting and um, doing my little doodles, getting some visions in my brain going. And this was the first painting I did in a series I call The Totograms. And it is kind of my way of uh, keeping connected to the younger version of myself. I used to do little doodles and creatures and stuff like that all the time. And I said, what if I kind of leaned into that? I've always been a bit embarrassed of it, you know. I'm a grown man, I'm 31, should I be drawing cartoons? Ooh, I don't know. I think a lot of you guys would say yes, actually. You guys seem pretty cool. <laughs> but, so uh, I started just leaning into it and I said, whatever, this is my way of keeping the child alive. And, there's Chip, uh, owner of uh, the Highbrow Lowbrow, some club in town. He bought it from me at an event. And uh, that got me pretty excited. I, I hadn't sold a lot of art at the time. And I began, uh, whoops, that's a 3D animation thing I had done in the past. Sorry, it's inversed. But uh, so then I started doing these um, drawings uh, on my iPad. And they're these just kind of wild, kind of uh, iconographic things. And at the same time, I was also uh, just visited the Louvre which is uh, one of the greatest museums in the world. And they had a lot of Egyptian and uh, ancient um, imagery. And one thing I noticed was that animals are incorporated into a lot of different things. You'll see a toothbrush with an elephant carved into it in the bottom. Or, uh, you know, everything. Uh, you know, there'll be inlays on things, little elephants. And I thought, huh, there's something funny about our society. We don't value nature. We don't we don't have it at the forefront of our of our mind. And back then, they, you know, there was a reverence for nature and animals that I just, I'd like to kind of bring back into the world of design and art and have that be something that's valued. So I kept leaning into this these animals things. Uh, I ended up making this series here, the Totograms. I'll try to put it in a little grid view here. Um, but yeah, so I made these characters. And um, each of them has its own little theme, like uh, this one is awareness, this one is fruitfulness, this one's play. And I added that just so that, uh, I don't know, it just added a theme to it, it added some meaning, uh, something I didn't have when I was a kid and a lot of my art was meaning. So this was me beginning to try to make something that uh, maybe had a little bit more heart and soul. And so I started making those and um, eventually uh, I decided that I wanted it to have value. I, I don't like selling art that's just pretty. I don't. It's just, I'm, a, I'm practical, I'm a maker. So I started putting lights in them. That's where we got to here. This was the prototype of the LEDs. This one was just, uh, I had cut some holes in it and put the LEDs through, and that one I literally just put the LEDs straight behind a canvas. And that got me excited, because you know now there's functionality. There's something I can add a value to your room, not just a pretty picture. Um, you know, through the years, I also just did little experiments, and uh, like this little guy right here is just a little fiber optic experiment. I always knew I wanted to uh, create something with life and personality, and um, on we leaned. Um, I started taking the characters and designing them into 3D prints, um, and this is where I began to find, okay, I need to find a form, of, uh, a form for this. How is this going to express itself in the most in a way that gives people a good feeling. I'm always about adding utility or value. A good feeling is a value to me. So um, how can we integrate these into our life, this fun imagery? Um, then that got me, uh, this is where I really got the wild hair up my ass. Uh, and uh, at the time, I didn't have the technology, but I, lay, I uh, hand cut all of this for a client. They had seen my little heads, and they said, I want a cicada. And, for the first time, I had a budget to kind of do this and, and you know, someone willing to pay. So that's all uh, custom wired LEDs. It was like the shitty GoV ones, though, like the not addressable controller ones. And, uh, you know, I just like didn't know how to solder at the time. I'm always worried this guy's house is going to burn down with that damn thing. In there. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, so then I was experimenting with that, and this, so that's, this is the first totogram, uh, uh, that's the series name, that I converted into like a, a larger piece. And this was a, a sound sensitive, hand cut one, more integrated LEDs. Um, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, so that's, so that's, then I was like, geez, this is taking forever. So finally I got a laser cutter. Of course, the first thing you do when you buy a laser cutter is you etch a chihuahua into a taco. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's the first thing you do. Uh, the second thing you do is you start making amazing LED signs that have, you know, the, the, the dressable LEDs, the real big boy, cool guy LEDs. Uh, I'm running WLED now, and it's a wonderful software for anybody trying to program LEDs. Um, still playing with the 3D printer and adding uh, LEDs into things, but I want something bigger. I want something I can sell at markets. Uh, and that in comes kind of the current forms of my designs, which are these. Uh, let's see. So these are larger. These are two foot pieces. They're laser cut layered uh, with the LEDs in them. And these are kind of what I'm fine tuning right now. Um, let's see. I want to show you guys a picture of one that's a little bit more current. So this is uh, the current one I'm working on. So um, one issue I was running into was that they have these lights coming out of them, but their face wasn't illuminated. So then I added their little antennas so that the whole face could be illuminated. I also added a backing to kind of give it, uh, you know, it's like uh, one of those deers that got uh, its head on the wall <laughs> kind of thing. It creates a frame for it. So currently where I'm at is I'm just refining these designs. Uh, since I've been to the makerspace, uh, my workflow has been, I think I did the calculation, I was running on lasers at home, some diode laser, 20 watt. I think the laser here is 40 times faster. Wow. So what was taking me a week to make is now taking me 20 minutes to cut on that thing. Wow. I mean, and no failures, no, it's crazy. I mean, I've been completely supercharged by this place. It's been a life-changing experience being here for a month. Um, <laughs> These are some shots. So this is the one, first one I made here. Uh, let's see if I have some video. That's it's a weird video. Some sculptures. Um, oh, here's what 7-Eleven mode. I call this. So with uh, <laughs> with this, each of these areas here is um, individually uh, controllable in WLED. I broke it into groups, so if I wanted, that could be purple, that could be red, that could be blinking, that could not. And you can kind of, uh, it's like stage design. You can kind of, if you're willing to, create a very moody things with all these different sources of light. Um, yeah. Man, I've been talking pretty fast and consistently. <laughs> I have not done a presentation about this ever or told anybody about it, but, uh, but yes, so, um, Right now, the process, now that I have the speed and everything, is uh, making the process more efficient and uh, making it uh, easier to put together, which is more under the efficiency. So right now, I'm designing the insides of these things to um, hold the LEDs in a way that's more mechanically grounded, uh, just adding things so that it can be kind of put together in a way that's going to stay together, that's solid and um, efficient. Uh, eventually, I'd like to do this in a more consumer product. Everybody's like, oh, you should sell these for like $700 at a gallery. I'm like, that's, I don't relate to that. I want to make, make this efficient enough and fun enough and easy enough for me that I can offer this to everybody at any price point because I make them small, I'll make them big. With this baby boy, the old Tarky, I, I can make this thing six foot or whatever, four foot. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to develop it and make kind of, I, I call it a lamp business, but um, basically, yeah, just converting all of these designs into um, lamps, uh, breaking them down. That's a totally different project. I was going to say, there's, this is a, a co-project I'm doing with it. Um, the way I see it is these little creatures I make, I make these out of clay, and then I make silicone molds, and I cast them, and then I laser cut the TV, and then I add the LEDs. But these guys kind of represent us. They're these little tiny sculptures, and we're these people. We're trapped inside of screens. I'm sorry, guys. It's true. We're <laughs> fucked. Uh, and the totograms kind of represent what uh, I want to see more of. We're like leaning into our animal, leaning into our power. They're larger. You know, this kind of uh, animal worship. I'd rather worship an animal than a human, but I'm not worshiping anything, I guess, really. Uh, but yeah. Um, I think that's kind of all I have. I've just been talking and talking. I think you guys probably got something out of it. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, does anybody have questions about how it's made or what I'm thinking or yeah? I, I applied to Meow Wolf in the Vegas one, and they, they were interested in meeting me, but they said because I wasn't in Vegas, and there's no freaking way I'm leaving Austin. I wouldn't leave this place. I love this place. The, the, the spa? Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm always looking for, I'm trying, yeah, I'm always that kind of person. Where does this fit into society? Where, how can this have some kind of social function or utility or even bring light into the world? Yeah, I'm always trying to think of this. Shark Tank? Yeah, I don't know. Is it pragmatic enough for those business types? <laughs> uh, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, I was curious. So it's like tiered, right? It's tiered, yes. Okay. Oh, that, that reminds me. Here, I'm going to just play a little video while you're doing your question. Yeah. This is me breaking the, the drawings up into the, uh, the tiers, the different. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I literally do this in Procreate with symmetry mode on, and I have to literally like hand draw each layer. So I just take oh. these drawings and my brain over the years, I've learned how to break it up. I can kind of see it in 3D, wow. and you just cut it. It's, yeah. it's an involved process. It takes about three, four, five hours sometimes, and I have to re I start having to redraw things and simplify it so that the laser cutter doesn't, so it's just not crazy, and it, everything fits together nice. If it's too jagged, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's harder to glue. So yeah, it's a, it's, is, is that kind of your question? Uh, so oh yeah, what's your question? Uh, first of all, like, That, that's something I'm figuring out for efficiency's sake. It is a little frustrating when I want it to be 3D, so I'll print the same part three times, mm. but now I'm using three times as much wood. Right, wood yeah. isn't expensive, but I'm an I'm a efficiency obsessive person. I'm an industrial designer minded. Yeah, those motherboard mounts maybe come in, you know what I'm talking about? Like screws in, it's like a standoff. I, it's, like a standoff. Yeah, I was thinking that were just like a stacked, um, uh, like a dowel, like just cut a dowel, you know, like an yeah, inch. And just, okay. But then, there, yeah, it would be cool because then the light would spill out too. Yeah. I do that in some of the designs. I'll do little cutouts where the uh, light can kind of spill out. And okay, yeah. uh, I'm a film and animation person originally, so I'm very lighting and uh, you know animation uh, oriented. Gorgeous. Yeah, this is probably my favorite picture of it. That's quite a dynamic lighting combo. Um, also, yeah, in the future I can add pots. Of course, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with WLED, but it's like the most robust platform I think for for programming LEDs. You can add uh, potentiometers to change the color palettes and the speed and the intensity of things. It just it becomes like a, I'm going to build the next Furby, guys. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> the next thing this year is the next thing my sights are on is servo motors so I can start animating it and having it maybe have two different. Yeah, yeah, Bluetooth speaker. Or I had a, a Glade plug-in, the little smell thing. Each one has their own smell. I mean, guys, I got a lot of ideas. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? I don't know if I'm going over time. Uh, Baby hippos forever, all one word. Okay. Yeah, baby hippos forever. It's it's confusing. Yeah, I actually met that guy a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, that's somewhere I should show him. Yeah, I used to hang out at their studio when it was on the south side, but they're they're creating something there. They're kind of they need things like that. They do. Yeah. Anywhere I can get these, because I, I, like I said, I created these to be able to be uh, more than one place at once. Like I can, with the lasers here, create these sculptures in about a day if I needed to. Um, yeah, I, I want to spread them. I'm evangelizing these creatures. I think they're, yeah, best parts of me into the world. They go. Yeah, just go spend part of the day. Oh. They just go to wander spaces, get your ticket, and go through the exhibit, and you'll get a good feel for what's going on. Yeah. Pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd fit right in there. Um, uh, you had a question? No? Oh, you had a question. Yeah, so this is like stacked layers of wood. Do you use any like uh, acrylic or different color acrylic or is it just... No, I, uh, it's, it's, it feel, it's a touchy subject for me because I'm trying to create, I said, uh, you know, I'm making this for many different people. I'm trying to make it as sustainable as possible. Uh, wood has wood glue in it and that's, that's its own sack of marbles. But I find that maybe that's a little bit more sustainable than doing all acrylic. You know, there was a desire to use acrylic; it's way more stronger and stuff. But uh, you know, eventually, I'd love to use all natural paints. I'd love to make this as 
guilt-free as possible if I'm making a mass-marketed product. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like a straight cutout hole, and then I actually have found a lot of people, they'll use a uh, quarter inch um, plexiglass, but what I've found works even better, and it's way lighter and way easier to work with, is really thin, I think it's like three mil mylar for stenciling, milky white mylar. You can, I, I've had pieces that are this wide with just LEDs on the side, and the way, if you, if you were side lighting them, it, it uh, picks up the light, and because it's so thin, it spreads it like oil over something. Like, it really, uh, yeah. Stenciling mylar, amazing. I've been playing with diffusers for years. That is the best one I've found. Wow, okay, cool. Yeah. And then it's, I make all these channels on the inside, so there's a little line here where the, I, I, you know, I do it in about three inches so you don't get any spotting. I spot, I'm so anti-spotting. Uh, like, I, that is so tacky. Um, and then I just put them on these channels, you know, like they're like these little, yeah, just like a little piece of wood in the same shape as that, that the, that the lights can just like hang out on. And it's like a little maze on the inside. Eventually yeah. they'll be uh, designed so that the wiring is very clean and yeah, yeah it's, it's really, that's a fun little puzzle to solve in itself. Yeah. Have you checked, have you seen um, Nathan Jin, Light Stain Dart? No. He used to be a member here. I haven't seen him around a long time, I'm still, but he does a lot of, Address LED work and, and so you, a lot more acrylic in his shop. Nice. But, um, I'll, I'll, his Instagram is Light Stained Arts. Light Stained Arts. I assume he's still in Austin, but he used to do his stuff here on the lasers and the CNC. Nice. And he was using the, the bullet LEDs with, uh, I don't know what software, but the bullet LEDs, he had the uh, CNC program, drill out the back or laser it, and then it just pops right into the. Oh. It's supposed to go. So it's all, already fixtured. Yeah, it's really exciting process to, to, to get to the, I don't I didn't think I would be so into the nitty gritty of all that, but it's really fun making it, I don't know, if making it efficient, I think it's, there's a, there's a challenge that it's art, there's an art to it mm -hmm. that's really actually quite stimulating to, to play with. It's a design problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah those is a whole nother game, it's fun, you know, I started as an artist, now I'm turning into a freaking engineer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the opposite problem, yeah. I feel like. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, this is quite impromptu. Thanks for listening, guys.